Good morning. Uh, I want to thank uh, everyone for uh, inviting me here to uh, speak this morning, uh, especially Jackie Perry and Dee Dee uh, for inviting me to speak. And uh, this is a, a great place and kind of my second home here, uh, Beaver Street uh, Enterprises. So um, again, thank you for uh, letting me come in today. I want to talk a little bit about saying uh, that uh, I think that uh, starting a business um, in this economic time is actually the best time to uh, start a business. Uh, yes, I know the economy is down. I know there are people um, out here struggling a little bit. Um, but think about it for a minute. It is 2009. We have access to information on every level that's imaginable. We have access to the Internet. We have access to our educational opportunities are tremendous. And our resource partners, like you said, Beaver Street, First Coast Business Options, uh, University of North Florida, uh, the SBA, um, just all of these support uh, networks are pretty much in overdrive uh, today uh, to help entrepreneurs succeed. And so let's look at uh, all the organizations in Jacksonville that will facilitate, assist anyone, anyone who has an idea and wants to own their own business. Additionally, in this economy, everyone has had the opportunity, and everyone that I know has had an opportunity to rethink how they want to uh, position themselves in life, um, you know, how they want to live. And now, those of you who may have a job and who may at this time don't quit your job, but may be thinking, hey, I want to propose now how I want to think about maybe opening or expanding uh, my own business. For those of us already out here in business, this economy has shown that the norm that was yesterday may not be applicable today. And thus, you know, we have to work on diversification, and that's what I want to talk to you a little bit about, is diversification of your business and how this economy can help. I'll tell you a little bit about my business, and then I want to reach out to the audience a little bit and talk to you and see if anyone has any questions or wondering about uh, expanding their business. I have a technology, education, engineering, and training services firm. And my main customer is the Department of Defense. This year, with the new administration, the government has been trying to return some of the contracted opportunities that the government normally does back to the government. So that's kind of the antithesis of what I'm trying to do because I'm trying to provide services to the government and the government wants to pull some of those services back in. So what we had to do this year was we had to react and we had to respond to business in a new way. And so my core business of training solutions, which is what I do, um, background in helicopters and training systems. So why do we sell convection ovens to the Air Force, you may ask? Why did we sell office furniture to the Navy at Kings Bay, Georgia? Why do I now have an environmental construction division uh, set up? And Bob Tabone is here. He runs that. And the simple answer is that the market is in constant motion. And the main objective in business, in our business, is to solve problems for the federal government and provide the best customer service available. So when we started, our belief was that A. Harold and Associates could do everything all by ourselves. And we didn't need any partners or assistance of, uh, at all. And that's the furthest thing from the truth. We need partners and team partners and new relationships. Every day I monitor my teaming and business relationships. They change all the time. But I understand that we do not have to be the prime contractor on every uh, project. We can provide support and let our partners shine. Our name doesn't have to be up in lights. And let me give you an example. We just won a subcontract that took 12 months to bid and negotiate with the government. As a subcontractor, we had a 10% stake as a subcontractor. Seems like a small amount, just having 10%. The contract value was $33 million. So if we had not joined 
the team or sought out another business relationship, we would not be in position today to receive approximately $660,000 each year for the next five years. So with these modifications and changes in strategy, those have led us to some of the successes that we've had to date. I want to tell you that we partner. We partner with anyone. We team with anyone. We will work out an arrangement to figure out how we can solve a problem. That is going to help us sustain our long-term stability in this economy as it's changing. And as I said earlier, this is the best time uh, to get out and start a business. So as uh, someone mentioned earlier, they, I think it was Didi that mentioned earlier, show of hands of who owns businesses in the audience. Can I get it? I mean, that is a tremendous amount of uh, entrepreneurial success. And those of you who own businesses and those of you who are thinking about business, you know, you have to look at how you want to take the relationship to the next level. Do you all have a good banking relationship, a key element in running your business? Have you looked at becoming a member of the incubator? I spent the last year of my life in this building. My number one cheerleader in this country is Jackie Perry. And I think Nancy Alvarez Hernandez at SBA, they're neck and neck for being uh, a fan of A. Harold and Associates. Um, have you taken any classes at the University of North Florida? Have you used the SBDC? All of these are resources for you to help grow your business. I tell you, as I mentioned earlier, research, research, research. You can research the competition. You can find more information about a team partner. You can look up information about a specific bid and find out about the history of a project or that bid. So what are the barriers to starting a business? What I can tell you is that my lovely bride, Michelle, did not care at all that I wanted to start a business. All she said was, Andy, you need a plan. You need a plan. You need a really, really, really good plan. <laughs> you also, you know, having a plan does not include leaving my day job and leaving, uh, walking away from my paycheck uh, with a mortgage and three babies to feed. So why would anyone jump out into the world and start a business? My answer is the sky is the limit. Nowhere else in the world can a piano playing helicopter pilot <laughs> dream of owning his own business. Our motto is no one will out-hustle A. Harold and Associates. We may not know everything, but we believe that we can figure it out. Anyone ever heard of electromagnetic environmental engineering? Neither did I. <laughs> but thank goodness for Google, because that is a powerful tool. That was one of my first opportunities back in 2006. One of my first contracts as a subcontractor. And uh, we had to go out and find a PhD in electrical engineering to provide uh, this kind of anti-radar, uh, anti-static uh, support uh, for the Navy out at the Naval Warfare Center in Panama City. I don't have a whole lot of PhDs in electrical engineering in my Rolodex. I just want to let you know. In conclusion, I want to say that Access to information for minority businesses is the great equalizer in this economy. Never before has so much information and so many subjects been available. Seek help in finding your core competency. Look to others for support. Find that passion and start and continue to grow your businesses. I want to thank you so much this morning for your time. And if there's time for a few questions, if anyone has any questions, I'd love to take uh, questions from the audience. Thank you very much.